Hi everybody, in today's video we're going to go over getting started with the creation of our tile based game. So first off I just want to quickly go over the four files I have set up here which is basically forming our project template. So for starters let's go over main.py and I'm not going to go into too much detail but pretty much we have a game class which contains a constructor for initializing pi game as well as our screen. And then we have a load method where we're going to load our assets. Then we have a new instance method which helps us create a new game. Then we have a run method where we have our game loop, a quit method where we're going to use to basically close the window and quit Pi game. And then we have an update method, a method for handling our Pi game events, and another method for drawing items in our game loop. Now this code over here below, I'm basically just checking, hey, is this file being run as a script? And if it is, then we create a new instance of our game and then we set it to run. Now the next file I have over here is settings.py and this file we basically just have some basic game settings and I also have some constants stored here. So we basically have the title, the width, the height, the FPS and then for these colors over here if the settings file gets a lot larger you can have a separate constants.py file which might help you. But aside from that we have our player.py file where which is basically just a sprite class for controlling our player. So we have a constructor for that, we have a move method, and then we have an update method. And the move method is just basically gonna help us control the movement of our player on our screen. And the update method will basically just be used for animation and controlling the rectangle around our player. Then in obstacles.py, we have a wall sprite, which just needs a constructor and an update method. We don't really need a move method for this because obviously the walls are not gonna move. Okay, so now that I've gone over the basic project template, what we want to do now is basically create our grid. So this is a tile-based game, so essentially what we have is a 2D grid, which basically tells us where we can put objects and how we can control the movement of our player. So we basically just want a set of tiles that forms a grid. So in our settings.py file, we can have some constants for our grid. So we can set our tile size to be, I don't know, 64 pixels. A grid width, that will be the width of the screen divided by the tile size. A grid height, which will be the height of the screen divided by the tile size. And then we can have a draw grid method in our game class, which will just draw this grid that we have. So I can say for x in range, 0 width, tile size, and then we can just draw a set of lines. Basically we're just going to draw a bunch of vertical lines to the screen that takes the whole width of the screen. So it's up the screen, we can just make this black, x 0, x height. And we'll do the same for the horizontal lines. So actually, let me just run this before so you can see. Am I missing something? Oh, I see. Yep, this is a method for our class, so I forgot to include the self parameter. So you can see over here, we have a bunch of vertical lines being drawn. And now we can draw some horizontal lines Also make sure you call self.drawgrid here in this draw method. I think I might have already had it. So just make sure you have that. Now if we run it again, we can see we have a 2D grid being created with tile sizes of 64 pixels. And the neat thing about this is that if you want to just change the tile size, you just have to change this one constant. And if you close this and try to run it again, you can see our tiles became a lot smaller. So I'll change the tile size back to 64 pixels because I think it's more useful for our game, the type of game I'm trying to create. And now let's start working on our player. So the first thing that we should know is that our player is going to belong to a sprite group called the All Sprites group. 
which we're basically just going to use to update every single sprite that we create. So we can say self.groups is equal to game.all sprites. Game is basically just an instance of our game class that we're going to pass into this function. And then we have to initialize our pygame.sprite, so pga.sprite.sprite.init self, self.groups. And then we can set our game to be stored in this class. And then we can create a random image that we're just going to use to represent our game. So for now, we'll just use a square with the color green. That's basically just the size of the tile. So we can say pygame.surface. The width will be the tile size, and the height will be the tile size. And then we can fill this image with the color green. And then we have to wrap a rectangle around this image. And then we can set the coordinates of where we want this player to start. So x of the y is equal to the y. And we'll just put that right there. Get rid of that pass because you don't need it anymore. And basically we want to make sure that this rectangle stays around the image. So since the player is going to be moving and we're going to be calling update over here, we have to just say self.rec.x is equal to self.x times the tile size. And self.rec.y is equal to self.y times the tile size. Let's just make sure that the rectangle around the image is basically the x coordinate times the width of the image and the y coordinate times the height of the image, in which case that's tile size. Now in our main numpy, let's go to new instance and create an instance of our player. So first we'll just create a sprite group, self.all sprites is equal to uh, pygame.sprite.group. And then we'll just create some sprites, say self.player to an instance of player and over here we have to pass in our game instance which as I said before is just this class so we pass in self and then for position we'll just have it start at 0 0 and after creating the sprites what we can do is that we can draw them so over here under draw grid we have to make sure that the sprites appear on top of the grid so if we do self dot all sprites dot draw And then in our update method, we want to make sure all these sprites update as well. And if we were to run it now, hot screen. Yep, I forgot to specify the surface in this all sprites.draw function. Make sure you do that. And as you can see, our player is generated over here on the top left. It's just the color green and takes up one tile. So now that the player is drawn, let's work on adding some keyboard input so we can move this player around. So let's say if the event.type is equal to pygame.key down. Let's say if the left key is pressed. We want to call our move function, so we want to say self.player.move. So if the right key is called, self.player.move. If the down key is called, self.player.move is kind of tedious. But it's just a quick way that we can get motion working. And in this move class now, what we want to specify is how our motion works. So we can say dx is equal to 0, dy is equal to 0. So by default, uh, when this method is called, it'll assume that one of these parameters is 0 at least, so it doesn't move in two directions. So then we can say we want to change the x position, so it's going to be incremented by this dx value and the y position so it's incremented by this dy value and then over here when we call move we can specify hey okay, uh, we're moving left so i want dx to equal negative one and dy will automatically be set to zero so it won't move in two directions similarly over here 
here dy is equal to negative 1 and dy is equal to 1. So if we run this now, right and left appears to be working, but down and up is backwards. So over here, I want d1 to equal 1, dy to equal negative 1. And as you can see now, we have player motion working. Right now, the player is not bounded by anything, so you can see it goes off the screen. If you go up or to left, that's something we'll resolve in a future video, but for now, we have basic player motion working. Uh, the last thing that we'll cover in this video is just the creation of our wall class. So as I said, the wall is going to act like an obstacle, so the player cannot interact with it, it can collide with it, but it can't pass through it. For now, it'll just kind of be there and the player can pass through it, but in a future video, we'll add collision detection so that doesn't happen. So basically, we want to do a similar thing to what we did in the player class to call pygame.sprite.sprite.init self and self.groups and we have to define these groups as part of all sprites and to differentiate from a player we're also going to add it to its own separate group we're going to add it to game.walls so let me just create this group quickly first So underneath our all sprites, we can create another sprite group called self walls. Now over here, we can find self game is equal to game. Draw our wall to self image. And just like the player, we want it to take up one tile size. We'll just make the wall white. And then add a rectangle around this wall. And then we want to set the position of the wall, set the x equal to x, y is equal to y. And in this case, the wall is not going to move, so we don't really need to put the self-direct uh, stuff in our update method. We can just put it here. Over here we can draw a bunch of walls as you remember we define the walls to be the size of one tile so if we want a wall of a certain length we need to create a bunch of wall objects so the way we can do that is over here i can say for x in range i'm just going to draw a horizontal wall say from an x coordinate and then we have to specify a certain width so i'll say for x in range five and we'll just do a width of five create a wall, pass in our game instance, and then the x coordinate, and then a y coordinate, which we'll set to 5. And I have an imported wall from obstacles. Import wall. The wall is part of all sprites, so we won't have to call the draw method for it. Again, I have an error. Okay, so it turns out that error was just something related to how I was running Python in VS Code. Uh, I've since resolved it, but something that I noticed that was potentially problematic is in this for x loop, you basically just want this uh, ending index to be higher than the initial index otherwise you'll have a wall of width 0 and it won't appear so over here I have to specify that I want it to start at 5 and end at 10 so then if I run it now you can see we have a wall being generated but you can see I can't collide with this wall I just pass through it right now that's something we'll go over in the next video and if you have any concerns or questions please leave a comment below and like and subscribe